Facilitators, I'm so grateful that you've chosen to use Choose Happiness at work in your work. This facilitator's video will help you facilitate a session of Choose Happiness at work. Let me make clear what this video is not. I am not running through the basics of how to play the game. That's a different video. I'm also not running through the basics of facilitation in general. Lots of other resources out there for facilitation basics. In this video, I'm focused on specific issues with facilitating a Choose Happiness at Work session. Most of this video, I'm going to assume that you're using the game as a game, but as you'll see in the instructions and written facilitator's guide, lots of ways you can use the cards. So keep that in mind as we walk through some key steps. First of all, get clear on your goals. You need to have a target for you to aim at and facilitate towards. Lots of things you might decide to use Choose Happiness at Work for. You might be after primarily building teamwork. You might be after primarily building knowledge of the science of happiness and people playing. You might be after surfacing problems that are tough to talk about in your organization. Or you might be focused on finding specific solutions to a specific problem. Simply define what you want to get out of the experience and you'll be more likely to get it. Second step, you might want a bit of put a bit of time into what you call your session and what, what even you call Choose Happiness at Work. Because in some cultures, if you invite people to come play a game, you'll get, I'm not wasting my time playing a game at work, you moron. And in other cultures, you might get, yay, we're going to play a game. How awesome, we can learn a lot. So you decide what fits for your culture. You might call Choose Happiness at Work a game, an experiential learning tool, facilitated discussion, up to you, but put a little thought into what you call your session. Once you've done those two, you're ready for step three. Define and share your agenda. Brain, brain science says we crave certainty, so tell people what to expect. How's the timing gonna work? What are the goals? Who's attending? standard stuff around creating and sharing an agenda will help you here as well. Step four, set up the space. You know as a facilitator the physical environment matters. If you are going to play Choose Happiness at Work as a card game, we suggest round tables that hold six, perhaps eight people, largely free of material so that you can play just as you'd want a smooth flat surface to play poker or bridge, you want a smooth flat surface to play games here. You might give kinesthetic litters something to fiddle with at the table. You might bring some color and decorations to the room. You might bring snacks, standard setup stuff, but be sure to set up well for however you've decided to use Juice Happiness at Work. Next step, number five, I strongly suggest curating the game. What does that mean? Well, Choose Happiness at Work, as you know, has two big decks of cards, problematic scenarios and science-based solutions. I would encourage you as the facilitator to go through those decks and pull out cards that don't apply to your organization as well. You'll end up with a subset of each deck that's more focused on your work culture, organizational challenges, etc. So curate the decks before you use them and you'll have a more focused, customized set of cards to work with. Step six, go over expectations, ground rules, and instructions in the session. So once the session starts, you're obviously going to want to remind people of the agenda. You also may want to go over ground rules for the first time or in addition to sending them out in the agenda. Ground rules matter, obviously, you know that as a facilitator. But Choose Happiness at Work can raise some tough issues. There's a whole deck of problems. So you might, for example, want to get everyone to agree that it's a focused, safe place that doesn't affect anyone's performance review so that people can talk safely about problems in your organization. I do encourage focus because, as you may have heard me say in a workshop or a video, the science of multitasking is pretty clear that basically multitasking makes you stupid and miserable. So I encourage you to ask for focus. I encourage you to do whatever you need to do to make the session with Choose Happiness at Work psychologically safe. Make it a safe place for people to speak freely and therefore learn the most. Seven, finally it's time to play or facilitate discussion depending on how you're using the game. You may or may not choose to join in. 
If you have one table of people, you can probably join in the game and be a player and facilitator at the same time. But in all likelihood, if you have more than one table or you're not playing it as a game, but you're using Choose Happiness at Work cards to facilitate discussion, you probably want to be a neutral facilitator, able to move between multiple tables, answering questions, keeping people on track, and all the good things that good facilitators like you do. Finally, eighth step, after you've played, it's time to debrief and get clear on next steps. So what did you learn? What surprised people? Who has questions about some of the science in the game? What are next steps? What actions do you want to take? Who's going to take them? When and where? As facilitators like you know, follow through is everything. So how are you going to follow through on your Choose Happiness at Work session? If you think about those eight steps, we think you'll be in great shape to facilitate a session of Choose Happiness at Work. There's a written facilitator's guide if you want more detail, and of course a lot of other resources out there on facilitation. We hope it goes well, and we'd love to hear how it goes and hear how we can be helpful at Happy Brain Science. Thanks again for choosing to use Choose Happiness at Work in your work.